I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, six pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. Who are you? Hey, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another video as I venture back into the world of Stranger Things, a show I'd never seen before. This is thanks to Frame by Frame, who sent in another paid request as long as well as a request for episode three. So those will be uploaded back to back. I did thank you so much for that. And if anyone's ever interested in requesting any other type of videos or reviews or topics or reactions or any other random videos, Please feel free to send a request either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both things are down below in the info box. Now, Stranger Things Episode 2. Last we had the little girl, Eleven, being found in the rain by our three lead kids. And it started off promising. Uh, the little girl, I uh, she think she's doing a really good job in her performance. The little kids, the three leads, uh, I like their interactions with each other. I bet she's deaf. No, she's not deaf. She's probably a psycho like Michael Myers. Yeah, no, come on, man. Uh, I didn't mind that. I thought the kids were doing a good job. They were not irritating or annoying. And Eleven doesn't say much, but ultimately throughout the episode tells that there's bad people coming for her. Ultimately tells them that she has seen their missing friend and using their Dungeons and Dragons board game says they're in, I, I think it would become known as the upside down world. And uses one of their pieces to showcase that there are monsters there. I would say this, when the episode was with the kids or Winona Ryder. Because her story is she starts getting these messages from her missing kid because the kid utilizes these light bulbs. And you get more of that in episode 3, but here is the inkling of fouls these light bulbs and there's a monster coming through the wall. Granted, not the best CGI, but I mean it is a, a show. On Netflix but yeah I would have preferred them going the old typical route of like the original Nightmare on Elm Street where they show when Freddy was coming through the wall if they did then they filmed it poorly but it, it seemed like they just went the CGI route and I went again I thought 1984 film Nightmare on Elm Street and that looked cooler than than this shot but I mean, that's a little nitpick thing but again, the, the look of the show, the music, the score, the synthesizer score, the you learn a little bit more about Eleven, where like she has a flashback that she was dragged by these hospital orderlies, and you find out, I believe the next episode why that's the case, and they find out that she didn't do telekin. Again, anything to do with that, in particular, you see that Eleven and the lead kid. There's a more of a friendship growing between them. 
as he's showing her his place, his you know. That was sweet. That was nice. The actors had good chemistry all around everybody, and but I would say overall this episode was a step down for me from the first one. The missing kid's older brother. There's a whole segment where he goes to see his dad, who's a deadbeat fuck who left them, and tries to get him to notice. And he's like, "Hey, I'm... hey your mother told her told you that stuff," and blah, 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 blah. and he's with some fucking dorky bitch, whatever the hell she was, fuck buddy, whatever. And then the the, the kid gives him. A missing person's poster. In case you don't remember what he looks like. I get it. They're trying. They're developing the character, but ultimately, I sat there and went, "Is this really needed? This whole thing where he goes to see his dad and I? I don't. In the big scheme of things, I don't think it's really needed. I think that's one of the issues I have with the show." It seems like from time to time there's a lot of stuff that could be edited and it would be a pretty strong movie. I, I don't know if this needed, I don't know how many episodes, I didn't, but I've only seen the first three. It just seems like there's bits and pieces that you could edit and it would flow a bit better. Like uh, the lead kid, I, I call him the lead kid, his sister... Who has his friend and she has glasses and the sister wants to fuck this guy. I don't give a shit about any of that. I don't care. The sister I don't care about. Uh, she grew on me a little bit in the third episode to be fair. But this episode I didn't give a shit about the sister. I don't give a shit if she wants to have sex. I don't give a shit if she wants to get you know, someone to eat her poontain pie. Her friend who has the glasses. I've been given no reason to care about her because there's. I would say there's no build up, but I probably could play about that. But I get like, okay, all I know about this friend, she's the sister's friend, she's got glasses. Uh, as if she was Velma from Scooby Doo. And she, her, the friend is at the pool, a monster takes her, she disappears, end of episode. And so that's what I mean. The episode's called The Weirdo on Maple Street. It was kind of half and half for me. The little bit with one order rider. I didn't mind those bits. Like when she's getting ready to leave in the car. But she's hearing the song. Should I stay or should I go? Which right is very much on the nose. You might as well have a Dion sign going. Are you going to stay or go? Fucker. Literally the song is telling her. You don't stay you don't go. I mean. You can't be more on the nose than that. <laughs> Unless you had an actual narrator talk to one older writer. Uh, and tell her what to do. But should she stay? Or she should go back in? She's, she's seen the light balls. It could be her missing son communicating. And like I said, the stuff with Eleven and the three kids. That stuff was interesting. And anytime it would go to the sister. And the sister's friend. And even the, the missing kid's brother. I'm like, go back to Eleven and the kids. Like, go, go, Their story is what is the most interesting to me. Their story is the thing that's the most fascinating to me. And these other characters you're focusing on. Like the the, the missing brothers. I mean, the missing kid's older brother. He, he's fine acting wise. I like a moment where there's a flashback where... He's telling his younger brother, you shouldn't be forced to like these stuff that you don't, that you're not into. You know, he seems like a good brother. Like, that scene I don't mind. But I don't care about him going to see his dad who's a fucking deadbeat. I just didn't care about that. And like I said, the missing sister and the whole... The missing sister. The, damn, he's confused. The sister that wants to fuck. I just didn't care. I didn't care and I thought it just took too much of the, the running time away. That's just my opinion. But, uh, and with that said, it was an okay episode. Again, I didn't like it as much as the first one. 
but it, I didn't hate it either. I just felt more problems and with it, and I'm like, okay, it seems like now you're you're slowing down, and I did it. It's trying to take its sweet time. Sometimes I'm like, you're taking you're a bit too much of a sweet ass time, but uh, I did. Yeah, part of me wonders if this would work better as. Like a, like a mini series, like a two part mini series, where each one's like ninety minutes long. So it's like a three hour. Maybe uh, maybe not. But with that said, I will say I liked episode three a bit more than this one. I would say of, of the three I've seen, this is my least favorite so far. But again, not horrible, just eh. But with that said, thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you in the next video. Later.